who should not concern us here. More important is the function of this, ther this parable serves in the current preterism, which is to demonstrate the complete lack of proper response on the part of the people in general, and especially the opponents of John the Baptist and Jesus. The interpretation part, which is verses 18 and 19, sarcastically contrasts G John and Jesus in terms of both their lifestyles and the accusations they receive. But the point in the is the common absurdity of the slanders directed against each of them, not the contrast. So let's back up, and no, no feeling bad. Last week they mispronounced that too. It's pericope. Uh, more important is the function of this parable serves in the current pericope. So pericope is just a just a, a literary chunk, uh, if you will, like a, a unit, just a, like part of a book. Um, we call we call them often Bible passages, which a Bible passage could just be like, you know, three or four words, could be a phrase, could be a verse, could be a chapter, could be whatever. You know, it's just whatever you're reading that day. But the pericope is like an individual unit. Okay, so 16, 17, 18, and 19. They are the end of a larger story. So they form their own pericope in this gospel. It's just a word. Not very important for you to know. But I will tell you that if you go to a Bible study with people that you would like to impress, use pericope a lot. <laughs> That's all I got for you. You know, um, uh, It's a seminary word that no one ever uses outside of seminary. Um, but, uh, but we love to do that. And... and um, you know, it's it, it, it. You know, I will say that, that my colleagues that are my friends say, "Hey, what passage are you preaching on this Sunday?" And my colleagues that I'm not so close to say, "What pericope do you choose for the?" Uh, you know, and that yeah, kind of stuff. So, yeah. so you know, it's just a fancy word. But um, imagine that you were there hearing what Jesus just said, what Nancy read to us. Uh, would you have been challenged by this or confused by this? What do you think? Probably confused. Confused. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, because he's turning him into, you know, a bad guy. Right. A glutton. A, a, well, now a this is Jesus guy. talking. Yeah, Jesus is talking about himself. As yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah. So, but he's saying, you know, this is what, what they say I am. Right. And, you know, I, I, I make friends with just the lowliest of people, right. the scum, right. the, the beggars. Well, yeah, it was like, you know, John, John lived austere and you made fun of him. I'm not, and you're making fun of me. You know, so, what does it take, right? right. You know, it, it's almost, it's, it's, I love that literary device of saying, here's one end of the spectrum and here's the other. And you don't like anything. You know, I mean, it's, it's just that kind of, this, that kind of thing. So let's but, play with this for a little bit. But, but in a way, uh -huh. it's also saying it's the, it's the end that matters, not the means to get there, is what I'm saying. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's like this is a means to an end, and that's the mean. It's, it's the results. Right. It's the means to the end, and I'm doing it this way, and he's doing it that way. That's... Sort of yeah, I, I kind of hear my own dad where he's like, look, I tried being mean about this and I tried being nice about this and you're still not doing it. You know what I mean? It's that kind of, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And in the end, you'll still be judged. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So let's, let's play with this for a little bit. I mean, we see what Jesus says here, right? Let's put that in contemporary terms. Let's take that phrase by phrase. Man, I'm going to grab a Bible so that I can play along too. But phrase by phrase, like that playing the flute in the marketplace or, or, or whatever. I mean, how do we need to say it? We don't do that now, so what do we need to do? Music of any variety. Yeah. George <laughs> yeah, well, this one says we played wedding music, but you wouldn't dance, and then we sang wedding. funeral songs, and you wouldn't cry. Right. Well, it's like, so you know. Sort of, yeah, that's not too far. No, it's not too far away. But it but starts it, it, with, it's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, you're not adult here. You're not mature. Okay. Which is kind of what's going on in our world today. 
I'm not gonna wear a mask. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm -hmm. That's kind of why I want to do this. So, so let's say here. Um, so we get this. Let's just start the same way Jesus did, and he uh, begins with, you know, what shall I? To what shall I compare this generation? So let's just go with that. So to what shall I compare? It is like what? What is like what? What do you mean? Well, so we're going to be rewriting 16, verses 16, 17, 18, and 19. So Jesus begins by saying, you know, but what will I compare this generation to? And he says, it's like children sitting in the markets and call, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, what is that today? What do we, what do we, what will we say today? We're sitting with a phone in our hand. A we're phone? We're posting on Facebook. Okay, so it's like people with their faces in their phones? Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. And if I want to talk to Penny, I'm going to text her even though she's sitting across the room from me. Mm -hmm. I mean, Good. Mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. But <laughs> Especially if you want to say something about Will. Hey. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see here. Um, uh, so verse uh, you know, 17. So you know, we played some music and you didn't dance. I mean, how do we go and put that in, in current terms? We can stick with the phone motif if you like, but. You gave them something to, to celebrate or to be happy for, mm -hmm. and they ignored it. Okay. Well, what what's a good example of that these days? Mm. Having a family time, playing some games together, and okay. the, I mean, you know, and and people are going, this isn't good enough. You know, they're this fighting, does. Or they're fighting over the game. Yeah, and they fight over the game, you know, you cheated, um, I don't want to play this anymore. Uh, we took you right. to a beach vacation and all you did was complain. Well, let me, yeah, okay, so let me, y'all help me finish that, that may be it. Yeah. Um, but I gave you more time as family and you what? Didn't want it. Didn't want it. I mean, let's do some more more uh okay you were bored with it are you or you and, or you kept your face on your phone yeah yeah you were bored and you got bored. bored i like and you got bored all right and then the next one is something sad we mourned to you and you did not lament what version is this this is this the new king james that was old king okay well, you took something away from yeah so we did something sad and you didn't cry so i mean you know essentially what they're saying um i put you in your room and you didn't. Grandma died. <laughs> and you well, said, oh, well, yeah, but that's, I, you know. Yeah, we can do something a little more, a little more yeah. contemporary here. I mean, I, we can, I mean, we can get into the politics and all that if you want. We're all friends. We're going to stay that way after this. That's fine. But, but um, hmm. well, you know. We fired the police chief. <laughs> and then what? And then you didn't what? And you still hate police. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's not, I think you know. More family thing than this okay. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. All right, good. So, so, um, hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Which, which could be a, a cataclysmic event. Um, or grandma fell and broke her hip. Well, and we, she's we in the hospital and, in the midst of and, COVID epidemic. And nobody can go see her. You know, grandma's lying in the hospital sick and, and none of us can go see her. And the kids don't want to go. And they don't care. Or do anything to make a video to send yeah. to her. Yeah, yeah. Um, or go up, stand outside your window with mm. posters. <laughs> and and they don't they don't want to go. They don't cry. They they're not sad that they can't see grandma. They're mad that they can't be outside playing. Right. 
or in their phones. Or yeah, I know. So you you got to figure out how that fits. Yeah, I know, right? You guys are making it easy on the scribe today. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. I'm trying to think of something. Well, I mean, I can give you the. You uh, have kids. You should be. You should be able to come up with something. Well, sure. I hear that. Um, uh, but I, I want it to. I want it to more apply. universal. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm kind of. I mean, I'm. You know, again, it's, it's political, but I'm thinking. You know, um, you know, we, we've we've known people to die from COVID nineteen, and yet you won't wear a mask. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that's yeah you know, exactly yeah, yeah that's, that's. exactly. I would take that one step further and say we know people who died of COVID-19 and you want to go to a bar. <laughs> yeah. Or you want to go to a playground or whatever. Or a beach or, or, or a party at so-and-so's house. Or a graduation or, party. Or, or church. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not going to throw that in. Yeah, no, all right. All right. Uh, let's see here. All right, so we got John coming very austerely. And they said that he has a demon. So what would we what would we do with that? Uh, you know, who, what do you mean? What would we do with that? Well, how would we rewrite that? Well, we can tie days? it to the far right. Interesting. Then, okay. Yeah. Then, you know. Yeah. Because you're talking about about Christians that are so conservative in their views that they can't accept. Uh, sexual orientation other than heterosexual. Right. They can't accept, in some cases, race other than sex. Yeah. Let me try something with this. You know, someone said law and order, and yet racism infected that law and order, right? Or, or I guess to even say, you know, uh, you know, some cry for law and order and yet allow racism to be involved or, you know, in that, that kind of thing. Um, and you say love everyone um, and yet there are people hungry and, and, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of trying to see those two extremes of taking care of people, you know, the, the binding of the law and order and the loosening of the God loves everyone. You know, kind of sides, and what what do people say against those two things? So, so let's say you know, order you know, for the cause of order and decency and everyone behaving. What is what is that not allow? It may restrict personal rights. Gotcha, gotcha. So, look, I'm going to put your not that it's really any of ours, but your law and order. Because you can post a curfew, so I can't go out after six. <laughs> Restricting rights. All right. And what would be the other side of that? And to care for um, the underserved, your taxes are raised. Ah. And you can only care for the under. Served by raising taxes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. I'm going to read today's and then I'll read yesterday's too. So today's. To what shall I compare this generation? It is like people with their faces in their phones. I gave you more time as family and you got bored. You know folks who have died and you won't wear a mask. Your law and order ends up restricting rights and you can only care for the underserved by raising your taxes. Kind of getting like Amos. <laughs> All right, here's yesterday's. But what will I compare this generation? It is like teenagers always on their phones. <laughs> if we posted a funny post, you blocked me. If we put the news on, you called it fake news. We protested, we protested against police violence and you sent in more cops. You have been warned about the virus and you won't wear a mask. How similar is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. They have more people. 
They, they kind of stuck to the phone motif. You know what I mean? They kind of they kind of stood there. So so uh, consistency is the key, evidently. So uh, all right. Um, so let's let's go to the next pericope in this passage. <laughs> See, you think how smart I sound when I say that? I mean, it's like wow. Um, let's do twenty-five. If, if somebody can read verses twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven. Oh. Yeah, we're going to skip a bunch there. Okay, mine is, is, is the Good News Bible, Okay, so it's different. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you were pleased <clears throat> to have it ever happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, it kind of turns around. I feel like, doesn't it? It's almost as if people are now listening to Jesus. You know, you know, and maybe, maybe you know, a bunch of the crowd got mad and left with that last statement about keeping your noses in your phones, and but there's some that stuck around. Um, you know, this is a you know, this is a prayer. Um, you know, and and uh, it may just be his disciples. After everybody left, this may just be to the home crowd. You know. Um, well, it is pretty early in his career. Right. Right. So they're getting to know each other. So let's talk about being a disciple. What do we learn from these three verses? What it takes to be a disciple, or at least to somebody that's willing to listen to Jesus. He's trying to teach them where the power comes from, where the word comes from. Mm -hmm. That it's really the Father and, and not the John the Baptist or him. Right, right. I mean, that's, I think, the point of the thing. Those verses that we read, there's more. Mm -hmm. What about verse 25? That kind of messes up with our whole paradigm that yeah, church is for adults. Take the bird. Well, it goes it's back to the theme. Light if, you, if you go with them. Well, and it's, it's that theme that um, relating to, to, to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as a child as opposed to mm -hmm. over-intellectualizing the process and just accepting, kids accept things at face value. Mm -hmm. And if you can just look at what Jesus is saying, it's pretty simple. Yeah. But when you start to tear apart his parables, it gets a little. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is a, a return again and again and again in Scripture, you know, seemingly, you know, whether it's, you know, a little child shall lead them or whatever, but that seemed to resonate in us this childlike innocence and wonder in our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so why is that? Why is that held above all else, at least in this verse? I mean, I went to seminary, right? Like, if we really wanted that, you should have gotten me when I was like, I think it was the summer after seventh grade at summer camp when I sort of found Jesus and understood. You know, I knew he was already saved, but you know what I mean? That's when you should have made me a priest, if that's the key. You know, if that's the key. When should it happen, in other words? I, an example comes to mind for me. Um, Midway has uh, probational firefighters that we call probies. And they're at the very lowest rung of the ladder over there. And I pray for them a lot because they got to mop all the time, do the, di you know what I mean, that Stop kind work. of stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just one of those setups. And I asked him, I said, what's your, you know, what makes a good probie? And they said, zero experience. Because they take everything seriously, you know. And, and you know, and they said, you know, I don't mind a, a, a probie from another department if they're really good. But if they're not, they don't learn anything, you know. And so I wonder how that would apply to this, you know, that, that you can. You well, know. they were all. 
and I mean, this whole concept is new. Mm -hmm. So they were all in, if you do the Proby thing, they were all having no experience with. Sure. I imagine the Pharisees being like a, you know, like a, a somewhat seasoned firefighter from yeah. like New Jersey that comes down here that thinks they know everything and right. aren't very much help at all, you know, in this, in this thing and gives their training officer a, a lot of grief, you know, and that's not a very fun assignment. Well, but if you look at the disciples, none of them. <laughs> yeah, they had no knowledge. Were, oh. I mean, they were fishermen and they were, you yeah. know, yeah. regular people, not Pharisees and Sadducees right. and working in the temple. So, I mean, we could just boil it down to that Jesus saw something that worked in his disciples and ran with it, but I think it's probably deeper than that. What do you what 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 benefits gives gives a person to have a quote childlike faith? I've seen that written in a lot of places. No preconceptions. Okay. Yeah. Well, and it's like a small child that thinks that their parents are the wisest people on on the planet. If their parents say it's so, then it's so, and they trust that. Mm -hmm. It's that same sort of thing because I see. The Trinity as the ultimate parent, that you know, it, it's that trust and mm -hmm. and just accepting that that I'm not going to lead you astray. So why don't we hang on to that? We learn too much. <laughs> and we're cynical. And education. <laughs> you get cynical. Yeah, I think that. And, and you see false prophets that are you know using yeah the words. From Scripture to tell you something entirely different than Jesus' message. Yep. Yeah. So say we. Well, yeah. That's my humble opinion. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. I, you know, this is. I mean, that 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 is something that shows up. You know, every now and then. Um, you know, I. Uh, uh, you know, I, this is nothing on this parish at all, or on me. Um, you know, but I tried to be the. You know, the rector that did youth ministry, and it's impossible. You can't serve two masters in that position like that. You know what I mean? You don't have the time and the, and the attention and that kind of stuff to, to be able to do that, you know? And so youth ministry, you know, for the past, I don't know, 70 years or so has, has gone to someone rather inexperienced, you know, and all that kind of stuff. What I'm saying is we've sort of followed this model really well. But something stopped, you know what I mean? We don't, you know, we don't care for it. It's great to have, a, you know, a responsible 19-year-old in charge of, you know, a group of 16-year-olds. That's great. The problem is that they need a lot of management. They need a lot of support, you know, and all that. And, and it's, it's a challenge to do that, you know. And you see a lot of bad behavior in churches with youth ministry. Um, and it's not, you know, I, I think my, my finger points to the lack of, interest you know just go do your thing you know and keep your parents giving their money to the church you know and and whatever you do is great as long as the kids are happy you know and that that's 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 not and it's really sad because i grew up with a youth group that um we were large yeah and we were committed All right. but we had adult supervision because it was required we did the work, we did the planning, we did the scheduling. The adult was there to, you know, yeah, yeah. write the permission slips and exactly. uh, yeah. keep you in line. Yeah. But didn't really have to very much. And right. I haven't seen that happen. Because, because we want we wanted to be there. We weren't there because mom and well, dad. Well, and it was also because yeah. there were people on power trips doing the leadership. <laughs> I mean go. it takes it takes a really good leader to let go and give the give the kids the skills and that they need, mm -hmm. the organizational skills, etc., 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 to do yeah. that kind of work. Okay. And it, it, it really takes more work in some ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, because you got to be the one to say, well, what about this or what about that? And, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and part of the quarantine for me, y'all that are on Best Street, you know, know, is that you have been having to do some of that. You know, that sort of hands-on guiding leadership. You know that administrative type stuff, and I hate it. It's got to be done every now and then. You know what I mean? But I hate. I, I love being a priest, but being the rector is not nearly as fun as <laughs> being a priest. You know. So, so, but yeah, I, you know, I, I know what you're saying there. 
Um, so let's uh, uh, let's get another uh, get these next three verses read. 28, 29, and 30. Maybe you have this by heart if you grew up at the 8 o'clock service. At these words of comfort. Mm -hmm. I love the words of comfort. I hate that we don't do them anymore. I know. Well, if we did a morning prayer, we would. No, no, words of comfort aren't the morning prayer. They are the right one. Right one, Eucharist. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, so, let's see why they can't be so let's see if I can do this. <laughs> come unto me, all ye who are tired. Oh, no, I've already messed it up. Yeah. Uh, come unto me, our labor and our. Okay, forget it. The labor and heavy. Penny. Heavy <laughs> labor. Yeah. Come to me. Penny, we do this. Travail. What's that? Travail. Oh, well, I've got the King James here. It should be, well, coming to me, all you that travail. It is travail, yeah. Yeah, let's pay you. Yeah. Come with me, all you that fail, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all who believe in him shall have everlasting life. Right. That was, that's one of them, and that is the most popular. But the one, this is the one that we have. Yeah, let's see here. I'm just going to read it out of here. Yeah. Um, oh, it's just the first verse. Oh, I see what you did, Penny. You took this verse, put it with the next verse. So your priest did all of them every Sunday, I assume, right? Yes, yeah, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. And so uh, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Well, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. So, let's look about yokes. If you'll turn your uh, where, when, how, so what page over. Yokes are heads. <laughs> yolks. Those are yolks. <laughs> the yolks on you. Why don't y'all you know, read this silently since Evie made that comment? Just kidding. Donald Fishburne Sons, Austin Fishburne. He has permission, but I can't remember why it's been out there. Because it's been there for weeks and weeks, and mm -hmm. we're all sitting there for, you know, every week it's been sitting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out whose it is. Who, what, what's, I missed. Don, Donald, there's, a, there's Don, a car out there with Texas tags that's been sitting Oh, yeah, in the same I, I've spot seen that. Ages. Yeah, and I don't know. It's not Donald mine. Fishburne's I kept thinking it was you. No, it's not mine. It's not anybody uh, I know. I knew it wasn't Eddie's. <laughs> All things Texas at Holy Cross Faith Memorial are Eddie's. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Jesus. Confining, you know, I mean, and yet 
the essence of what he's saying is, but take it on because the mind is light. It's, it's sort of contradictory. This is not the first time that Jesus has used one symbol and turned it into another thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so. I, I think he's saying, you know, I mean, you've been burdened with this yoke that's heavy with your life because before me your life has not been good but come with me take my yoke walk with me and i'll show you how easy life can be if you have me with you i will make your life better because i'm bringing you the good news yeah yeah But it seems that that but doesn't the come. The symbol is interesting to me. Well, so and, the fact and it, that it is a yoke, meaning that, you know, I think Jesus is saying he's with you and partnering with you. Yeah. He's not really promising that life is going to be sunshine and roses. Well, no, let's, but, all right, let, that's a good segue. You, let's let's you go. Will find rest. Let's do where is God in these words, and then we'll do so what? No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. We'll do where and now what? What you mean? We've done where, haven't we? Did we oh, do no. where? No, we no, I'm sorry, we haven't. Yeah, let's do where. We just did what? Who's <laughs> on first? Can we, can we read? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is Emily Towns. We must remain mindful that discipleship involves living our lives with integrity and faithfulness to God. As we come to a greater sense of self, finding our identity in God, we realize that we are developing the markers of our faith as we deepen our theological understanding of discipleship in ways great and small in our daily living. The discipleship to which Jesus calls us not only offers us rest, but also guarantees us persecution. So we must live with the conviction that we are being called to live in a new vision of who we are to be and what we are to proclaim from what we have learned from Jesus' teaching. All right, so if you'll do the now what now. You can't break it, There is the weariness that comes from having nothing at all to do that truly matters. The easy yoke means having something to do, a purpose that demands your all, and summon forth your best. It means work that is motivated by a passionate desire to see God's kingdom realized. It means work toward a certain future in which all of God's dreams will finally come true. To accept the yoke of the gentle and humble Lord is to embrace the worthy task that puts the soul at ease. Okay. Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to read you a sentence from the first one and a sentence from the second one that Penny just read. And I want to play with these two. The discipleship to which Jesus calls us not only offers us rest, but also guarantees us persecution. And then the next sentence, to accept the yoke of the gentle and humble Lord is to embrace the worthy task that puts the soul at ease. So how can we connect those two? I see it as knowing that we're on the right path. That this 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 work is 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 good and true in what God is calling us to do. When that kind of ministry happens, we may be exhausted but we feel good about what we're doing. And we see that there's that, that finish line of, of the world that God promised us when God's kingdom is here at home, as in heaven. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the right path is better than the easy path? Yes. Okay. And, and sometimes it's very hard to stay on that path, not because you personally don't want to stay on that path, but there are all these outside things, whether they're, you know, they're influences or they're actually people that are saying, you know, 
what are you doing that for? You Come know, on, it's shorter to go this way. Right, or you know, why do you, you know, why do you want to spend a Friday <coughs> afternoon going out and taking food to the homeless when we can go to the beach? You know, come on. So sometimes that's that's a hard. Yeah. Or even in your occupation, just working, um, restrictions like if you work for a corporation or, or if you work for someone else to to make a living for your family and it's contrary to your beliefs, your, you know, that that's, I've seen that situation. Mm -hmm. Well, look at all the stores that are open on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And if you work for that company, maybe you don't work every Sunday, but you're sure gonna work some Sundays. Mm -hmm. And we may believe that, you know, Sunday's the day to rest with God. Because he says, you know, let's rest. But um, what what puts your soul more at ease? Rest or persecution? I don't even I don't even think you can compare those two. persecution is something that's done to you and rest is something you do to yourself well but remember you know I mean I think that 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 rest you know Jesus says I will give you rest I, Jesus will give you the rest well, that kind of rest okay yeah I'm thinking about going to bed <laughs> <laughs> you certainly and persecution is some something's being done to you Right. And you're saying the rest you're talking about is the rest Jesus is doing to you or giving to and, you. And it I, depends you know. on how sure I am of what I'm doing. Mm, okay. I mean, if I know that, that, that I'm doing the right thing and people are, are saying, are disagreeing with me, if I'm sure I'm doing the right thing, then, then it, it, it almost tends to rally people. I mean, it, it rallies people, but in, you know, getting the support, when, when you're doing the right thing and, you, and you're doing it for the right reasons, then that, that persecution in some ways is like, okay, the Satan trying to- Is it okay it. then if you're persecuted, if you're doing the right thing for the right reason? Is that I, I, I think that that's part of the deal. You know. Because there always are going to be people, especially yeah. when it comes to social justice, there are always going to be people that are telling you it's the wrong thing. Well, yeah. I mean, you're asking those very people to give up some of their power and give it to somebody else. I mean, you're not going to have a, a friendly response to that mm -hmm. in any, any stretch. You know. um, yeah, I mean, I will tell you that, you know, my favorite is rest after being persecuted for the right reason. You know what I mean? That's that, what that, I like. When you've worked and you've done a good job, right. you take some rest of right. Jesus is always doing that. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good example. Yep. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, but his rest of his prayer. So let's let's do the so what, since we skipped it. Um, I will read that. And then we've got a little thing to do for the last little bit. Ed, do you want to read? Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that may well be the pastoral key to our reading this text. How does it speak to the hurting who are closed in by our lives and to the hurting who are far away? How do we engage with those who, whose struggles are profound and whose needs are overwhelming? If Jesus is in fact insisting that his blessing is known, not by the mighty and the powerful, but by the infants and the lowly, then this is a time for us too to identify with the plight of those who live on the fringes of our society and the fringes of our lives. All right, so take your papers, turn them over. <laughs> Complete this sentence. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to, so don't cheat and look at what it just said. 
As disciples of Jesus, we are called to what? Follow Jesus and be persecuted. Yeah. Feed others, clothe others, yeah. help others. Yeah. Take care pray of others. Pray for others. And I like how, how, how the part that sticks out to me are the, the people on the fringes of society. Sorry. Yeah. And the fringes of our lives. Yeah. You know? Um, and at the beginning of the quarantine, I, I sort of sent this out, but the people that are the fringes of, of, of are, are, that are in the fringes of my life are the people that just come to mind. You know what I mean? Like, I hadn't thought about that person in a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and as I said, as old Bishop told me once, he said, that, that happens for a reason. So you need to call them. You know, if you can't find a way to get in contact with them, just pray for them. You know? Um, but those are the fringes of our lives are the people that we go for a while and go, oh yeah, whatever happened to them? You know? And we're, we're supposed to do that in our own individual lives, but also in the lives of our society where we go, oh yeah, whatever happened to that neighborhood? You know what I mean? You know, that kind of stuff. And so, so, uh, All right, so Penny and Deb, time for a, another yoke. If you'll stand for just a moment. Uh, uh, uh. You missed the first yoke. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they were using the broomsticks as yokes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Try that on. Oh, this is the third yoke. So this is, a, this is the idea of that, is that it's our yoke. Some people will say that it came from the towel that Jesus used to dry the feet of the disciples. But it don't look like a towel to me. It looks looks more like a ceremonial thing. Are we supposed to wear it as a stole? Or well, yeah, wear it as a stole. I mean, I'm not ordaining you. I'm not a bishop. <laughs> find somebody else to do that for you. I'm not a master. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> no, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. So, so it, what do you think about that? Much more comfortable. A little bit more comfortable, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine me trying to give y'all communion in one of those things? Like, that would be your social distancing. Uh -huh. That would be your social distancing on this one. Oh, right, yeah, you get linked yeah, to the stone. Yeah, you could be connected. So, you can see how they do that now. Uh, Deb, you were wearing one of Jim Finnegan's old stoles. Aww. Yeah, yeah. And Penny, this one was given to me in my ordination by the good people of St. Paul's, where Tom was the rector at the oh, time. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Um, they are in constant use. What can I say? Well, he honors those people. Yes. Uh, it's, it's nice to shot a B12 every time I put on one of those before going into somebody's, you know? I'll never forget, we, I brought, we, we took the meeting to Newley, and, and we brought, um, she gave, she made us go into the closet, I think it was Jill and I, made us go into the closet and get Jim's, a couple of Jim's stalls and a couple of those, and I gave Jason, Mm -hmm. She wanted one particularly though, Jason. I thought he was going to cry. Yeah, he was no, so yeah. excited. Yeah. In the kitchen over, over there. Yeah, yeah. He no, was those, things, so excited. those things mean a lot to us, you know. I mean, yeah. they, they really do. And to be able to, to be, you know, someone who gets to carry that, that on, you know. And I'm not sure he even knew Jim. He did it, but he and you and Lee were close. Yeah. 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 I didn't know Jim Fenning. Oh, he, well, he, he, he was something else. I had I had heard him preach a couple of times, but I'd never met him and didn't know the connection. Uh, I actually here. took him communion in it at the lakes when he was over there, and he he really wasn't able. I knew what he was. He says, "Open your mouth, Jim." <laughs> it was like, yep. and I'm going, "Please, Lord, help me." <laughs> 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 so, so we've scary all said at that point. I don't, I don't like to do this, although I was given one, and that's fine. But um, you know, we've all seen folks coming out of seminary. They're usually on tippets, which are, which are kind of like black stoles. They're really mm -hmm. preaching scarves, but anyway. Um, and you see all these patches on them, right? Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. and, and, and they're from you know, usually the seminary, maybe the denomination. Um, in my case, Midway gave me, the fire department gave me one with their patch on it, which was... Oh, me. I mean, you know, like, how yeah. am I going, you know? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so, what would you put on yours? What would you put on your yoke? You know? 
I mean, it, you know, and even the one that Mary Diana, she, you know, gave, you know, me and Jason, you know, our, our little appliques, you know. Yeah. What, what is something that you'd put on yours, on your yoke, on your stole? You uh, know, Stephen did, Ministry. Oh, Stephen Ministry Compass. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That is really mm, good. Yeah, that yeah. is. Where do you think Oh yeah, yeah. What else would you I'm put? I'm thinking I'm gonna put all kinds of uh, sports things on mine. Now I will I will freely admit that my my tattoos all come from a particular time in my life, and they all you know have a, a story or whatever to go with. Mm -hmm. You know, so is there a particular time in your life of ministry or whatever that you want? On that, you know, to be you know, present on that stole, that yoke that you're, you know, showing them. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, uh, I think I did more ministry coaching than anything else for okay. 25 years. Yep. Kids, field hockey, swimming and diving. You know. Uh, you could hang a whistle up. Influence. <laughs> yeah, well, or the swimming pool, or the oh, field yeah. hockey stick, or yeah. with the ball. Or right. you know, I took kids around the colleges. I took them to. Foreign countries to play. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, that kind of stuff, I think, I is more where I did. Even though I taught ran Sunday school for eighteen years, you know, uh, that's like an hour, you know, and they came and went. Uh, yeah. But the the sustained coaching that I did over twenty five years, I think was more of a ministry than even teaching Sunday school, reading, being a lector, doing, being ministry, yes, more recently, but, you know, starting that was yeah, good. Yeah. But, now, and it's a sewing ministry, isn't it, Nancy? Yeah. yeah. You know, you but but the, the influence on, who knows how many hundred kids? Right. right. Over 25 years. And how many of those kids have, come back and said you made a difference uh well it was something on facebook the other day and i that blew me away that kids said about me and i don't know why yeah. i don't know why i think it was a picture that one of my kids put on and the, the comments you know and yeah. the number of people that the number of kids that showed up for bob's funeral my husband's yeah. funeral uh, just different things, you yeah. know. But I think I had more of a chance to influence and minister to in, in that capacity than in any other capacity. Even even more than as a teacher, because it was a more casual relationship. It was a more yeah almost yeah. intimate relationship sure. than you could do in the classroom. Well, and the kids were there for the most part because they wanted to. As opposed to in the classroom, right? Yeah. Well, well and also, I had to follow a, a real certain structure in the class. You had to do certain things right. a certain way in the classroom. But Nancy, what I found going back to your comment about being a different sort of teacher to them, you know, at the, at the fire department, you know, I'm not their their rector. I'm I'm their chaplain. Mm -hmm. So I'm the guy that you know is will get dirty with them, you know, and all that. But they also need a religious figure that. That kind of comes out on the balcony and waves and blesses. <laughs> you know, you kind of, you kind of. So we're not the Pope. You're the Archdeacon, but you're not. You're well, not but, the Archdeacon. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that it. they is want that a symbol. In our, yeah, in our religious lives, you yeah. need folks that are impeccable, and you also need to see folks in the liquor store every now and then to know that they're human. You know. And, and, and really, I have found, this is kind of a, a tangent, but what I've found is, is that if somebody feels like they have control of their lives right now, you know what I mean? Everything's going okay. That they want to be able to see their priest or whoever, teacher or whoever, acting like a person. Okay? But if they feel like they don't have a whole lot, of, whether life's good or not, if they don't have a whole lot of feeling of control over it, they want that religious figure to exude the control because that's a safe place for it to be, you know? So it's an interesting thing. So you do have to be kind of both, you know what I mean? Now over there, I need to, you know, they need to be in control because they're on the job. So they need to be, you know, have a chaplain that will carry the hose and that kind of stuff. But I also tell them, 
they got to have that person, like Nancy said, in the classroom, you know, somebody that has a bit of authority, if you will, you know, um, to come to with questions as well. Because quite honestly, as, as good as it is to see your, you know, rector or, or chaplain or whatever in the grocery store, um, you, you also need them to be above everyone else sometimes in your life, you know what I mean? And you can't, one person, I don't think, can be both really well, you know, and so... So that's that's a hard that's a hard plank to walk. Isn't it though? Yeah. It's a hard line to stay yeah. on. Yeah. And so I, you know, I, I'll if if you've let's say been in in, in crisis, uh, you know, and all this, you will see a very official father will. You know that that you know once the crisis is over, we'll go back to hanging out and you know and and. and you know, and that kind of stuff. But in the moment, I, I, I do try to act, you know, with that decorum that, you know, the priest that comes out on the balcony waves and blesses and goes back in. You know what I mean? That, that kind of Because, look, if you're, if you're feeling like you're blown around by the winds of life, well, I can be that sort of stable thing. You know what I mean? You know, and if, you know, and, and if you're not, uh, you know, then I can be right there with you. You know, it's just just how I've seen to kind of, kind of you know, seems that's how I respond to those things, you know. Um, but we do need both, you know. We need the youth minister that, you know, shows up, you know, unshaven and all that, and you know, and we need, you know, the Sandy Moyle was larger than life to the girls in our youth group. She didn't have much interaction with them, so that's kind of what you lose. But they really look up to her. You see, you know, see how that works? It's funny. Well, it's, it's, it's for them to see a woman as free. Sure. Yeah. And maybe her being human, more human yeah. to them, would have changed that for them. You see, you know, it's not manipulation. It's just what we do, you know, as, as, as religious people, you mm -hmm. know. And we want that out of a leader. Um, uh, chief, the uh, head chief over there, you don't... If you talk to him, you're in bad trouble. That's all. Chief Two, I mean, he's liable to show up and grab a hose. You gotta have both. They come to one for one some stuff. They come to the other for the other stuff. It's just mm -hmm. you know. So I think both of those. Bad cop, good cop. I'm sorry. Bad cop, good cop. And I think again, going back to the beginning of this passage, I think that's what Jesus was saying: is we tried the good cop with, we tried the bad cop with you. We're trying the good cop with it, and you're not going to do either one. You, you know, I mean, it's 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 kind of like that, you know. And it's I will say, as a parent, it's very frustrating for your children to not respond to one or the other. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, they do reach a point where they get too smart for their own riches. <laughs> uh, yeah, we 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 past that point. Oops. Oh no, they're great. They're really really good kids. They're really good kids. All right. Um, let's Most see. of them are, even those that some of them are turkeys. Uh huh. All right. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. God, our Father, you see our, your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Can we please say the Lord's Prayer together? Oh, yeah. And uh, I invite you to, to remember those that have asked for your prayers, those that you know to pray for, and let us also pray for those that might not have anybody else to pray for them in the words that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Thank Good you. suggestion. I miss praying together. Yeah, yes. me too. Yes. Me too. And it's just not the same with the TV. Um, speaking of which, well, that's why I like to do. July, I was 
Was it six? Four. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the 19th of July. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I talked to Chris, and I'll, I'll send everybody a note, but I, with the numbers the way they are, uh, the it's 19th not might not change, but I'm not comfortable making an announcement right now about it. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so yeah, we'll see. Um, if y'all want homework, go to YouTube and look up Handles, He Shall Feed His Flock. It's beautiful, and I have the lyrics for you. Ah, um, and it, it's you. a very, very beautiful piece, and uh, any... Any of the time results are, are worth your time. Isn't this part of the Messiah? It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, yes. Yes. I remember seeing it. I have found you too, which is, you know, and, you know. I think my dad's going to cancel the cable because he can watch YouTube now. But, well, and it's I have. Because you watch one thing and they bring, bring it something. Up. You know, yeah. related things, doing this racism but thing. I was listening to somebody that was talking about that, you know, Mahalia Jackson sang The Sparrow. Yeah. Better. Oh, yeah. So I got into that, and then it just went from, from kind of, I don't know, one, and I was just feeling all of this wonderful stuff because I was getting all of these wonderful pieces of music that, that say what, yeah. We want to hear, and we don't get to hear much anymore. And I don't know. I just, I just, I, I got a guy cooking with me in the kitchen on YouTube. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm having more fun. I'm, well, I found well, it. Look up, um, 